Well, good morning. It's good to have you here this morning. Thank you so much for being here at the House of the Lord. Uh, this is Georgia weather right here. We, uh, one week we're sitting in the sun, the next week we're trying to get in the shade, and everybody uh, is a little humid this morning, but we're glad to be in the house of the Lord and be able to be back together here at uh, Good News Church. Uh, first, first and foremost, I just want to thank all of our, uh, our people that were willing to go and fight, and uh, this is our Memorial Day weekend, and we... Uh, Appreciate those that were willing to stand up for the freedoms of the United States of America, and uh, we we appreciate uh, the all the all that they gave uh, for us to have this uh, freedom right here to be able to assemble together, and uh, we just want to give uh, those veterans that are here with us this morning. We thank you so much for uh, your service, and we ask that uh, that we would pray uh, for each of the families that lost loved ones and the. Uh, Wars through the time. So thank you so much uh, for uh, being here this morning. And uh, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for their love and your kindness, dear Lord, toward us and giving us the hope eternal in you, dear Lord. And Father, we do pray for this service today, dear Lord, that it might be a service that would uplift and glorify your name. Father, you have done all for us, dear Lord, that we might have all. And we thank you, dear Lord, for that. We thank you for those that were willing to go and to fight for our country. And Lord, we lift them up before you, dear Lord, in this, uh, this time. And Lord, we pray for those families that lost loved ones in battle, dear Lord. We ask God that you'll cause them to feel the warmth of your arms around them, dear Lord. And Father, we do ask now, dear God, as we go on into this service, dear Lord, that everything we do would bring honor and glory to you. So we give you all praise in Jesus' name. If you will, let's all stand. We're going to sing this old song on the winning side.
going to sing for us uh, this morning. So they've got a couple of songs, and then we've got one we want to do all together once again. I'm the microphone holder, official. <laughs> These ladies getting set up right here. these um, two songs right here we've got a couple of new ones we're going to do one is called Old Church Choir I know you guys have probably heard it on the radio so if y'all know it y'all clap along y'all sing um, and then another one is I want to go to church these two songs really hit home with us and that's why we picked them because we want to go to church and a lot of people a lot of states they're not letting them yet um, so I'm thankful for all of y'all, for everybody up here, for letting us come church. So. <clears throat> y'all pray for us this morning. We're a little nervous. <clears throat> There's revival. And it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can lose it. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy in the valley. That I wander, turn to mountains that I can climb. Oh, you're with me, never leave me. Cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel because it's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel because it's all you'll ever need. All you'll ever need. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i've got a heart overflowing cause i've been restored there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy no there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy oh there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching. 
mission But every place I turn for healing Left me more broken than the last Take me back To the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back To a preacher and a verse Where they see me at my worst to the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Tried to walk on my own, but I wound up lost Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross It's not a trophy for the winners It's a shelter for the sinners And it's right where I belong Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they see me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I want to go to church Oh, I want to go to church The family of God, I know it's hard, but we need each other. We're sisters and brothers, oh, take me back to the place that feels like home, to the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse. Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I wanna go to church I wanna go to church Oh, I wanna go to church Oh, I wanna go to church Oh, I wanna go to church I got thinking about this uh, this Memorial Day. Uh, uh, my dad was a veteran. And, uh, he loved this country uh, enough to go. He had uh, some disability from the, from the military, uh, like the froze to death over in Germany, right there. Uh, they didn't think he was even going to make it back, but uh, by the grace of the Good Lord, right there, they brought him back home. Not so many were that fortunate right there. But this is still the greatest nation in the world. There's not any greater. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be an American. And I appreciate what the Lord has given us this opportunity to be here today. But uh, if you will, let's stand. We're just going to sing the first and last verse of this song that the singer's playing right here. It's called the America the Beautiful. Certainly it is. It's the most beautiful place I've ever seen in all my life. So y'all help us as we try to get some of this. Oh, beautiful, poor spacious sky. Yeah. 
Donald already mentioned Memorial Day weekend, and we are honored to have uh, several veterans here at this church. Just a uh, Memorial Day weekend for those who gave everything. Just remember those who didn't come back. Just, uh, just, pray, just remember their families. Will there be any birthdays this week? Si? She's four. All right. Have anyone else? And happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Any anniversaries? Any unspoken prayer requests, raise a hand. Uh, remember our Bible school, and uh, give me a thumbs up if I'm right. It starts July 19th. All right, July 19th. I was right for a change. And, uh, can I get a couple of ushers, please? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day and all you've done for us, Father. Just uh, for this Memorial Day weekend, Father, for all of these men and women who gave their life to sin in this country, Father, Lord. Just... Uh, Thank you for them, Father. We can lay our heads down on our pillows every night, Father, Lord, and it's a great nation, Father. Father, for the remainder of this service, Father, just take Brother Austin, Father, hide him behind the cross, Father. We'll see you and not him, Father. Give him the words to say, Father. Father, Lord, just uh, use us for you, Father. We'll go through the remainder of this day in your week. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> morning. Thank everybody for being here with us today. I'm a little bit OCD. I had to get a nut out of my core here. I can get a hundred foot drop cord off my truck. It's got one loop in it, one knot. I'll have to undo that whole thing and straighten that out before I can use it. 
thankful that you're here today. I really do appreciate Donald and Josh both keeping us in the mind and spirit of our Memorial Day weekend and, and observance. Um, normally, at the end of our service, uh, on, on this weekend, we would have all of our veterans come out, shake hands with them, love on them a little bit, let them know that we really appreciate them. Uh, since we're in times that we don't really, can't really do that too well right now, they may not feel that comfortable about that being done. I'd like to ask all of our veterans to stand up and let us recognize you this morning. All of our vets, stand up, would you? All of our veterans, stand up. Y'all stand up. Brother Raymond's standing right here. All of our vets, I appreciate that. Let's let them know we appreciate them so very much. Yes, we do. We've always seen our veterans and our vets' families as uh, people of heroic nature. And of course, in our in our present times, people on our uh, front lines, our, our health workers, and our, all of our medical people, which we have a number of those here today too. Uh, we see them also in that same line as they're uh, out there uh, putting their lives on the line, so to speak, to try to help people, uh, try to get people better and get them well. I don't know at the times that I've, I've been so appreciative of seeing maybe on the news where a lot of those, uh, uh, those hospital personnel would line up in a hallway when a person was actually leaving a, uh, maybe an ICU unit, something like that. They'd gotten better, how they were cheering them on. And, Appreciate that uh, so, so very much. Uh, today, I'd like for you to turn with me, if you will, to Luke's Gospel, chapter number four. Luke's Gospel, chapter number four. Um, while you're turning, let me say again, as always, we really appreciate uh, Brother Nathan Taylor. Uh, those of you who are with us online, thank you for being with us. And uh, You had a little blackout a while ago. Nathan was coming up, comes up with ways of trying to keep our services live stream since we've been uh, primarily doing this to try to keep our church current, uh, reaching out to the community at large. And uh, for those of you online, uh, Nathan has a, an umbrella over his phone there to keep it from heating up. And uh, the wind caught that, blew it over. That's what happened a few minutes ago. So he's right back on the job there. Has been through our Wednesday live streams and all of our all of our. Our processes through this whole thing, we really appreciate it, this family. And uh, uh, as I say, it is good. As the girls sung a while ago, it is good to be at church. It, it is. We'll be meeting with the deacons, talking with them about getting back in the building. I don't know about you, but we got some fine air conditioners. See them right there on the back of the building? Man, they work great, too. And we intend to use them, amen? So uh, we're going to have you back in there under that effect here pretty soon. And so, uh, if you will, look at verse number 18 right there, 18, 19, really 18 through 21. That's where we want you to look. And I uh, want to say, too, congratulations to all of our graduating seniors. Uh, I know Brother Noah. Uh, Noah is uh, one of our graduates here at the church. And I don't know if we've got, uh, I know Miss Gracie's graduating. Our granddaughter Ashton is graduating. I uh, don't know if we've got uh, any more directly connected with the church on a regular basis, but we may have. I don't want to miss them, uh, but uh, we certainly do appreciate all of our all of our graduates. Miss uh, <coughs> Miss uh, Shanna Dyer that used to come here. Miss Shanna's graduating as well, and so a good number of them. And uh, things can't be like they probably look forward to a being. So appreciate all the families being real creative and trying to do things to honor their hard work and their commitment and their faithfulness to their education uh, through these 12 years. Today we'll talk to you a few minutes about the freedom of faith. As Brother Donald said, it's good to be free. I don't know about you, I'm thankful to be an American. I'm thankful to be born in this country. I'm thankful for those who have given all that they had to give to sustain this country. Uh, but I'm also thankful to be in North Georgia. How about that? Amen. I'm thankful to be right here today. I just count that a tremendous blessing to be right here in this part of the country. I'm glad to be able to say that as far as I know, uh, there hasn't been anyone in the state of Georgia that's been arrested for going to church. I do appreciate that attitude of the governor. Uh, he has pretty much left that up to churches. There's a church over in, I think it's Dawsonville. Had never closed. They've been open through this whole thing for any of their people that wanted to come. 
And uh, as a matter of fact, they even had revival about three weeks ago. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thankful uh, that uh, at least the state of Georgia has lived up to its position in the Bible Belt uh, and seen houses of worship as essential. And I appreciate that. appreciate the president going on record this week and saying the same thing, uh, that uh, places like this is essential uh, to the health and well-being of our uh, of our citizens, and it certainly is. In this particular passage, verse number 18, Christ is quoting Isaiah chapter number 61.1. He's in a synagogue in Nazareth. Uh, that's where he grew up. And uh, as, uh, as you well know, he said with authority, he said that, uh, that you don't have the kind of honor that you normally have in the place uh, where you grew up, in the place where you're from. A lot of people, a lot of young people uh, grow up and leave the place uh, where they grew up. I'm thankful for the ones who stay, uh, but uh, they'll grow, grow up and leave the place a lot of times because they have, uh, you know, sometime they have a, a better opportunity uh, kind of going beyond uh, some of the stigmatism that maybe they'd be, or feel like they would be leaving behind. Uh, as we see here, there was some of that going on because uh, in verse number 22, uh, they're talking, they're saying, well, don't we know this guy? Isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't he Joseph's son? I mean, where did he get all this wisdom? Where did he get all this authority and knowledge? Why is he, and how is he uh, presenting himself in such a position and place uh, as he is? Uh, but you notice verse 18. Let me read that one to you. Then I want to read Isaiah's uh, verse that Christ is quoting from. They're not exactly word for word. It said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and to recover and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. By the way, that's where we're living. In the day of grace, that's where we're living. Have to keep grace first place in your life. Amen. Not works. <laughs> no, not works, not legalism, but grace. And so that's, that's, that's our day. In verse number 20, he said, And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. I wanted to read through 21 uh, to verify the fact that this is current and active right now. Isn't that a good thing? It's current and active right now. Isaiah 61 1, he said, The Spirit of the Lord God, he said, is upon me. The Holy Spirit. That's what he's talking about. He's saying, He has qualified me. He said, Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, in other words, to show God's heart, will, and action to the meek. That's the word that Isaiah used. He used the word meek. What was he talking about? Christ used the word poor here. He was talking about uh, talking about gentle people, poor people, afflicted people who's been taken advantage of. That's what he's talking about. He said that he has sent me to bind up, in other words, to comfort, to relieve, to restore the brokenhearted, people who are broken for any reasons or many reasons. He said to proclaim liberty or freedom to the captives, the spiritual and physical, uh, spiritually oppressed, physically addicted. Uh, he said, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, though Christ uses the word bruised here, to them that are bound. What's he talking about? He's talking about whatever's controlling or hindering or oppressing that particular person or group. That's what he was talking about. He got real personal with that. And so given the foundation of these two verses this morning, I'd like for you and I to look at a few things. Uh, first off, that hinders our freedom as believers, even as uh, people in general. Uh, number one, the number one thing is what got Satan is pride. Uh, pride, comp competing with others uh, materially, uh, compromising our principles, our characters, uh, trying to fit in, thinking we're better than someone else. These kind of things uh, will bring us into a captive state, uh, will bring us into a place where parameters have been drawn and you and I will be stagnated It'll hold us in place and hold us in spiritual stagnation. I wrote several of these things down as the Lord gave them to me. Uh, the second thing was materialism, thinking things we do or how will make us happy or give us identity. How many things 
uh, today that just because you've got certain things or you've been able to do certain things or go certain places or those kind of things, all of those things are the right perspectives or blessings. They are. Uh, but when we start identifying with those things and materialism becomes our God, uh, there'll be people when churches open back up, uh, there'll be people that won't make too many church services because of materialism, uh, because they're chasing a dollar, because they've got a lifestyle put in place and gotten to the point where unless uh, they do or perform in certain, way, uh, certain uh, ways and make a certain amount, uh, they can't sustain that lifestyle. And so uh, they feel like they'd be lesser people if they can't accomplish certain things. I'm here to tell you I'm a firm believer in what Christ said in the Sermon on the Mount and that we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. He said all of these things, and I like the word he used, he said they'll be added. He said added unto you, added. He didn't say that you would earn them and get them. He said they would be added if you put him first. How many believes that today? How many can say I have abided by that same principle and found it to be absolutely true? Found the Lord to keep his word in that. The third thing is vanity. I mean, Solomon had a lot to say about vanity. Thinking temporary things uh, can bring or give us worth or peace or complete enjoyment or pleasure. Just vanity. I'm here to tell you, you and I will find uh, when, uh, when that undertaker is on their way to pick us up, there's not one thing that's going to be loaded up and carried with us. I mean, uh, they're, they're, we can, we're going to have to leave every bit of it here. Uh, when I've been around uh, talking to people uh, pretty close to the time they passed on, I never have heard anybody make a statement like this. I wish I'd have stayed at work longer. I wish I'd have bought four more cars. I wish I could have added, you know, 8,000 more feet to my house. I wish I could have made that Jamaican trip or I this or that. And they never do say that. If there's any regrets that they talk about, uh, they talk about the important things. I wish uh, that I could have had more time with my family. I wish maybe a lot of them would say something like this, not that I'm there asking them these things. I didn't, I'm not taking them through the last rites, uh, but they would say something like this. I wish I'd have been more faithful in my faith. I wish I'd have been more faithful in my, in my reading of God's word in my prayer life. I wish I'd have been more helpful to my family, my community community, my co-workers, my classmates. I wish I'd have made a bigger impact for the Lord in this life. I wish I'd have done it. That's the things they talk about. They're not talking about materialistic things that are just vanity because they've gotten to the place in their life where those important things have now taken a precedent. And so we need to keep that in mind right now while we've got health, strength, and ability to move and to talk and to be. We need to keep the things that are important that's in mind. Another thing that will cause spiritual stagnation and hinder our freedom or the freedom effect in our lives is procrastination. Procrastination. How many can say procrastination just aggravates me and agitates me to no end? <laughs> I mean, you don't have to raise your hand. You don't have to look at your husband or wife. Don't look at the kids. I mean, hey, they'd say procrast being lazy. This kind of stuff aggravates me to no end, you could say. And listen, we're designed to accomplish things, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're designed to get things done. I mean, we're made in the image of Almighty God. He made us as doers. Amen. He made us to get things done, to get things completed. And I'm telling you, he, listen, and he's given us, he's given us that desire in our heart. We're wired up that way. Hey, we're, uh, we're there's even older people. I've always been amazed at this. There's older people and even handicapped people, and they're not lazy. They get things done. I know some older folks. I had a neighbor one time. If you went to the cornfield with him, Lord have mercy, he would work you to the ground. I'm telling you, this, that old fellow was about 80 years old, and my goodness at the things he could get done. I mean, he just, they were just, they're just driven. They're compelled that way. Now, they're not lazy people, but being lazy or to procrastinate and put things off when we need to deal with them and we can deal with them, we should deal with them. Why? Because these kind of things eat into our self-esteem. I mean, how many could say, how many would agree with me today? You may not be like me. You may not be wired up. It's, it's whatever you can get done that day is how good you feel about yourself. I'm a little bit like that. I mean, I was taught to work and 
you know, the more things that I can accomplish, the more things that I can get done, it seems like I just go over a mental checklist in my mind and I've got all those things. Sometimes I don't get it all done, my goal for the day. But if I do, I feel so gratified. I feel like I was so effective. I feel so good about it. Can anybody relate to that? I mean, I can feel so good about that. I mean, and you should. You should feel good about those things. But if we're purposely lazy or purposely procrastinate, uh, listen, it works on our self-esteem. And so those kind of things brings in us a stagnation, if you will. Addictions, obviously. Addictions, obviously, hinders a life. They ruin lives. Uh, they, they entrap people uh, in a mode of men mental and physical destruction. Uh, listen, the a lot of addictions today, too. We think about alcoholism. We think about drug abuse, maybe. Uh, but there's addictions of lust or work. There's some people that are plain old workaholics. They take what I was just talking about to an extreme. Uh, the, some people are addicted to food, cussing. Some people just can't help but to cuss or curse. Some people are just steeped in negativity and pessimism, criticism, and doubt. How many knows that, hey, using bad language and speaking down and death, listen, hindrance and lack, according to the scriptures now, and I can give you a number of scriptures, uh, but according to the scriptures, listen, it gives the devil plenty to work with in your life. How many knows that? How many knows that so many of the promises of God are voice activated? He said, speak these things. Speak the word. I'm not talking about some ridiculous name and claim kind of attitude. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about speaking the promises of God, trusting what his word had to say, and putting your faith in mind right there what he had to say, regardless of what the world said. Listen, you might not deny the fact that certain things are going on, certain things are taking place. We don't deny the fact that this virus is bad, but listen, according to Psalms 91.10, we deny it's right into this very body that the Holy Spirit's living in. Hallelujah. I personally don't feel like there's room for the Holy Spirit and the coronavirus in here. <laughs> and listen, if it comes and attacks here, it can't stay too long. I'm not making some boast. I'm just simply saying today, uh, listen, Listen, that uh, uh, you and I are to speak these things according to the Scripture. The only way you can do that is to know what the Scripture says. If you don't know what the Scripture has to say, then it's hard to put that into, uh, into practical place in your life. It's hard to put that into motion. But using uh, this bad language and allowing these things to persist, uh, listen, that will bring us into a, a spiritual stagnation. It won't let us be free like we've been called to be. Poverty, by the way. Poverty traps people too, doesn't it? I mean, a lot of our country is now dealing with this kind of thing. I mean, but poverty completely wrecks people's lives. I'm telling you, uh, listen, friend, if there's anything that you and I uh, can say about the scriptures, and I know you might say, uh, well, this guy's another prosperity preacher. Well, I'm here to tell you, I believe people prosper in Jesus Christ. How many believes that? I mean, I really believe that. Am I saying if you come to Christ, some, you know, some large fortune is just going to fall into your lap? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just, listen, the Bible tells us very plainly, if we want money and things, we're to work for those things. That's what the Bible tells us. Compl plainly, completely. But what I'm saying is this. Listen, I believe that God intends for his children to prosper. I mean, after all, when they get to heaven, they're walking on golden streets. Hey, uh, they're going through pearl gates. Uh, I mean, we're talking about lavish building materials here that uh, you and I, we, we, they, we call them treasures. He calls them building supplies. I want you to know, friend, listen, you might say, well, that's my inheritance. That's what I'm going to. Did you know that the Bible don't talk in those terms? Do you know that? How many can say, I'm going to inherit all this when I die? You know, we might could say today, well, we'll inherit heaven when we die. Christ didn't say that. Did you know that, hey, to get an inheritance, you can't get an inheritance because you die? That's impossible. Do you agree? You can't get an inheritance. How many is expecting, listen, for your inheritance to show up and be set around your grave out at the graveyard out here? What good is that going to be to you? You don't get an inheritance because you died. You get an inheritance because somebody else died. Christ has died and given this to you. And he said, all those who come unto me, he said, I give them eternal life. In other words, you've got, listen, you've got everything right now, friend. Hey, you're as, you're as good as in heaven right now. 
That is, listen, according to the scripture, if you'll read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, go all the way to the end, those 53 verses, I want you to know what you'll find is this, that as soon as the breath leaves this body, as soon as this heart stops, you're in the presence of Almighty God right then, right there, right now. Amen. Yes. Amen. I mean, that is, listen, it's not like it's some future inheritance. It is a future destination, but you've got it right now. But you've got so much more than that, being a saved person. So much more than just missing hell. So much more than a guaranteed of heaven. Listen, you've got much, much more than that right now. The eighth thing I wanted to bring up is sickness. Sickness and injury can keep people bound. I know you agree with that. Listen, although the ministry of Jesus, all through his ministry, and the ministry of the apostles, and even the church, even the church, even in our modern times, even in our modern times, I want you to know today, listen, that you're on the grounds of a church that believes in healing. I want you to know today, you're on the grounds of a church that believes in fully being empowered by the Holy Spirit. You're on the grounds of a church today that believes that there's nothing, not one thing that God can't handle and not one thing He can't handle in the here and now. Listen, you're on the grounds of a church that believes in deliverance from, by the Holy Spirit. Amen? You're on the grounds of a church that believes in the authority of the Holy Ghost. You are. You are. You say, well, you don't sound too bad this, this morning. I, that's not what I'm going for. Listen, I just want you to know today, hey, let God be God and every man a liar. Listen, he is true. Listen, this word is true this morning. The sickness, injury. All of these kind of things, listen, all through these ministries of, of Jesus himself, the apostles, the church, people were healed, delivered, set free. All through this, they were helped. All sorts of mental and physical conditions. So sickness is something that certainly can keep us bound up. Prosperity. Prosperity. Let me go over this real quickly. The Bible has much to say about prosperity that's handled without humility. Friend, if we handle that without thankfulness and gratitude, listen, if, we don't, if we're don't, we not thankful toward God, it can cause pride and self-sufficiency. Listen, it'll cause unfaithfulness toward Christ and, and, and faith in Christ. If we don't put our prosperity in the right perspective, there's usually when people are, are doing, listen, when people are suffering, when they're sick, when they're doing badly, when they're struggling financially, but when, they're, when they've got a bad relationship going on, when something like that's taking place, I mean, something hard has shown up, it's not hard for them to follow those knees and ask God for help, is it? But when things are going perfectly, when things are going good, when everything is floating along real well, when you're not being distressed or discouraged, when you're not being challenged too much, when things seem to be just as they ought to be, I mean, if you could have said, I'd have... I could have dreamed it no better than this. Then it's real easy then, friend, to start turning your eyes toward worldly things. It's real easy to start thinking on all of the things of self. I tell you, what should happen when, when uh, you and I would say, well, everything is good right now. What should we do? We should lift our hand in praise to the Lord. That's what we should do. And thank him, friend. Thank him for smiling upon us and keeping his word to us as he said he would. Because we have put it first. And he said he'd add these things. So prosperity's wrecked a lot more people than heartache. Bitterness and anger. Oh friend, it'll harden a person's heart. But if we foster thoughts of revenge and hatred, harboring unforgiveness in our minds. Listen, it's like a mental cancer. The Bible talks about this extensively in Hebrews chapter number 12. Talking about roots of bitterness. In other words, just consuming a person. We're not to let that happen. We have been forgiven, so we can forgive. You might say, oh, you don't know what they've said. You don't know what they've done. You don't know what they've caused. No, I don't, but I know one thing. The Lord sure forgave me for a lot. As a matter of fact, friend, his grace has been shed on me. It's because he has shown me to uh, listen how to do it. I can do it, amen? <laughs> yes, I can. Bitterness will ruin your freedom today. Dishonesty, being untruthful. Listen, being untruthful or like the devil, operating in half-truths. Friend, listen, not paying our debts, being, not being honest in our business dealings. These things will ruin the reputation of a Christian. It's like I've said before, 
Listen, people might forget something you said. They might forget something you did. But if, if you, listen, if you owe them 10 bucks, they won't forget it as long as they got a mind to remember. Pay our debts. Be straight up in our, in our listen, uh, don't be hypocritical in our, in our public lives. In your private lives, those are private things. And I'm just trusting uh, because our spirit bears witness in the Lord. I'm trusting uh, that even in your private lives, those things are as they should be. And the Lord will convict you and me if they're not. I don't need to know what's up in your private lives. Not a bit. Don't even try to find it out. No, 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 I don't. But listen, in our public lives and in our interaction, and listen, we should be accountable. We should be transparent. We shouldn't mind anything. Anybody's welcome to come look at my fridge. It wants to. They're welcome to go through the magazines. They're welcome to look at the, uh, you know, look at the mainframe on the computer. Whatever they want to do, they're welcome. It's been said this way, who we serve in private, who we really love. And so don't do things uh, that would just hinder our freedom. Uh, listen, I want to encourage us uh, to be honorable people, showing respect and appreciation. Listen, love toward people, uh, honoring older people, our parents, people like this, treating old people as we were both to be treated. Uh, if we'll do that, friend, I'm telling you, listen, our lights will be shining bright. And friend, the last thing I want to mention, and we'll go into a few more examples here, and we'll get you in out of the heat. The last thing I want to mention to you is uh, tolerating demonic activity. The Lord gave me this, and I wrote it down. The tolerating demonic activity. We're not to do that. Did you know that? We're not to do that. Listen, we've been given authority over this. To remain spiritually oppressed is to allow sin to continue. You remember the last verse of James chapter 4, for he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him or to her. That, that word there is a generic word. It's talking about people. He said, it's sin. What is not of faith, the Bible said, is sin. And so when you and I are allowing little suspect things, or as some comedians might say, things that are out on the edge or things like that, things that are just, you know, real, maybe not terribly bad, but bad enough. We're allowing these things. We're saying these things. We're trying to fit in the world. I'm telling you, we've been called out from among the world. He desires that he just shower his grace and blessings into your life that the world could see that. Regardless of whatever you may be going through, everything may not be going just great and just right at the time, but he wants to listen. He, he has promised to take those circumstances, take those components, take those things. Don't get me wrong today. I'm not saying if you're suffering with some dread disease, that's God's will, and he's using that to somehow or another teach you a lesson or somehow or another show the world around you that he's good with you even though it's a struggle. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this. He said that even though life has that way of beating you up, we have that, listen, we have these challenges to face in life. He didn't say, I'll just invert every one of them away from you. What he said was, I'll go with you through them. I will help you in them. I will even cause what they were intended to do. Sickness is intended to what? It's intended to kill you. He said, no, I'll, listen. He said, I'll take that. I'll heal you. I'll raise you up. I'll bring you up. Poverty, poverty is intended to kill you. All these things that steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10, that the devil does, he intends to destroy you with them uh, but the Lord will take those things and cause them and work them to our good so you and I are not just to keep putting up listen with what the devil's up to and what, the, what he's doing listen the, these kind of things uh, people in the world and even some cases people in the church deal with all these things that I talked about and even more even different aspects of them but friend listen uh, some people some people, and I hope you're not like this today because I have been like this. There is some people that feel like they've got to impress God to get him to answer their prayers. They've got to read a certain amount of scripture. I've told you before, I've got a certain regiment that I've assigned myself. It's at least six chapters a day. Normally it's three in the morning, three in the evening, or more. But it's at least that much. I've assigned that to myself. Don't make me better than you if you don't do that. Don't make me lesser than you if you do more than that. But I just as for instance, I did that. But what I'm saying is if I was thinking, well, I didn't get my three chapters, so I might as well not pray tonight because God won't hear that. 
Or if I didn't witness to 12 people today, I might as well not pray tonight. If I didn't pass out, you know, uh, at least maybe 14 to 20 tracts today, I, I, may, I might as well not pray tonight. If I didn't show up to church and do certain things, I might as well not pray tonight. Now listen, I do know there's times the Holy Spirit motivates us to say something, to do something, to be a part of something. And if we don't do it, we go away convicted, knowing, feeling, feeling, friend, knowing, understanding uh, that uh, we, we missed an opportunity. We could have done something, should have done something. He was backing that with his grace and we didn't do it. I don't know about you, but the sin of omission is my biggest problem. But friend, listen, I'm not talking about so much that. I'm, I'm talking about, <coughs> listen, being legalistic and thinking that you've got to do certain things to get certain things from God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he gave him, that he gave him. It was not God's will that any should perish but that all would come to repentance. He, gave, he, come, he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And friend, listen, what's been given to you has been given to you. And friend, can I say to you today that if we really understand how the Lord loves us, if we really understand what kind of freedom and the effects of the freedom that we have in him, but then friend, I'm going to tell you we're not going to be reluctant to talk to him. We're not going to be reluctant to read after him. It's like Reynolds said Wednesday night. If you missed that, you missed a real blessing. You missed a blessing if you missed any of them. But Wednesday night, he, he expounded upon the fact of God loving, and he used Abraham. If you remember, he used Abraham and used uh, some, uh, some of the uh, accounts of his life to prove God's, God's willingness not to leave him and not to uh, not to, uh, not to not honor him. And so when we, and one of the things that he said was this. He said... Uh, it's it's kind of hard to love somebody that you feel like is just keeping up with all your mistakes and keeping up with every opportunity that they might have to take some away from you. But it's those people who really love you and who are blessed to be around you and who want to be part of the blessing with you and that kind of thing that wants to interact with you. Uh, you love those people. He said that's the way our mind should be and our heart should be toward God. And the Bible continues to confirm these things. Let me give you three or four uh, verses will be done. Dissatisfaction in the flesh or carnal desires. The Bible warns of this. Proverbs 27, 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. Ecclesiastes 2, 11. Solomon said, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, or everything I'd done, and on the labor that I had labored to do. Keep in mind, Solomon, richest man ever lived. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit. In other words, I thought I'd really be pleased with this. I thought I'd be gratified. I thought I'd be satisfied. And I found out that it was nothing but a, it was just clamping my spirit down because what I'd done begged more to do. What I'd accomplished needed more to be done. He goes on to say, he said, and there was no profit under the sun. In other words, lasting satisfaction and eternal profit. No, I'm going to leave every bit of it here. It was all a temporary thing. Isaiah 55, 2. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread or your needs? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me and eat that which is good. And let your soul, your mind, will, and emotions delight itself in fatness. You might say you're already doing that. No, what he's talking about is satisfaction, confidence in the Lord. Listen, several verses to... Talk about our freedom in Christ will be done. First, Second Corinthians three seventeen. Now, right now, that's a reoccurring theme in your Bible. Right now, Hallelujah. Now, the Lord is that Spirit. If where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom to participate. Second Corinthians one twenty. For all, all the promises of God in Him, Jesus, are yea or yes and Amen. God has said to it. Uh, be, and, and so should it, God has said, uh, so be it, when he said amen there, and so should we, unto the glory of God by us, what he's given us to have and to work with, to bring him glory. John 8, 36, if the Son, talking about Christ himself, the ultimate authority, therefore shall make you free, bring his person, power, and authority to bear on your conditions, ye shall be free indeed. Absolutely free to live as he has instructed, guaranteed, promised. 
He's qualified us. He's positioned us. He talks about adoption. At least the, legally it's been settled. Listen, spiritually it's been settled. 1 John 4, 17. I've only got two more. Herein is our love made perfect. God's likeness in us. That's what he's talking about. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Confidence when we come before him assured of who we are in him. Because as he is, so are we in this world. What an accountable verse that is. There is no fear or dread shrinking back in love. God's kind of freedom empowered in his love. But perfect love, mature, complete, that comes from a renewed mindset, cast out. Like this word, cast out fear. It could have been just as easily interpreted as purged. You remember what the Bible keeps saying in different places? He's purged our mind from wicked words. He's purged our mind from, uh, you know, from these awful things. He's purged it. In other words, he didn't just take our mind and, and, and reshape it, but because of his words, he's pushed out the, all the evil and bad that we learned, all the things that we were good at when it came to our flesh. He's pushed that out uh, by the, his powerful word. He's purged it, cleaned it up. That's what he's saying here. It casts out fear. It purges, removes. It doesn't allow because fear has torment. A lot of people are being tormented today because they're a Afraid of this, afraid of that, afraid of the virus, afraid of facing God. I don't know what the people I've heard, I mean, stand up in church. Not necessarily this church, but stand up in church. I don't know what the people I have heard, that devil thought they'd get through the bars. I don't know what the people I have heard that uh, stand up and say, well, I really dread facing God. Really dread facing God. Afraid of, maybe they didn't do it enough. Maybe they didn't do it right. Friend, listen, I'm not being arrogant up here today and say that, well, we shouldn't be afraid, we shouldn't fear him, we shouldn't, listen, not respect him, don't fear him in a way that somehow or another you're, you're afraid you're going to offend him and he's going to turn you into a piece of toast. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just simply saying this, respect him. But listen, according to this scripture and many more, you and I can trust his love for us and you and I, when he, when he purges our mind from these things and we renew our mind, we can trust, listen, his authority and power in us. We don't have to worry about those particular things. Let me finish my verse today. He said, because fear hath torment. Listen, it locks you up, if it will. It renders you ineffective. Hurts, tortures, condemns, confirms, and continues to do so until we're freed from it. He that fears or allows this to continue or trusts is in themselves is not made perfect does not grow and mature in love, doesn't get to the place of blessing and freedom that God, listen, that God, in, that God indwells and is not like Jesus walking around, listen, in fear, doing things, talking today about the freedom effect. There's people that's probably listening to me, and Brother Nathan will be taking us off here in a moment. There's people that's probably listening to me that can say, you know what, preacher, I was just a drunk until Jesus came into my life. I was addicted to drugs until Jesus came into my life. I was trafficked, and Jesus came into my life and gave me self-worth again and delivered me. I was in poverty until I started trusting Jesus, and he, uh, he made, made his promises real to me. I was in a terrible relationship until the Lord brought me from it and delivered me. I was in a place where I felt I was worthless and could never be any good to anybody until Jesus, Jesus gave me value. I made a pure mess of my life until Jesus came into my heart and made all the difference. Thank God for Jesus. He is the author of true and real freedom. Isn't he? We're living in a land that cherishes freedom. You know what? One of the things we could probably say, not that it's not that it's like, and our veterans can say this today, it's not like some of the places if it, that, that they went and fought. It's not like some of the oppression they've seen. But we in our country has gotten a little taste of what a little bit of socialism is like. Being told to do certain things, being kept from doing certain things, being told to depend upon the government. They're going to give you certain things and do certain things. I think 
I really think our government is trying to be a help. I really do. I pray for the president. I pray for the vice president. I pray for the folks in charge. The Bible tells us to. I really do. I don't think they're trying to control us. I think they were trying to help us, but I want you to know this. There is countries that, that really, that's a little taste of socialism. And you, if you've noticed, if you've watched and you some, you've noticed there's been protests all over the country over that. Why? Because we as Americans love freedom. Hallelujah. We love it. Amen. We're not going to give it up easy, are we? No, we're not. But do you know what the foundations of our freedom are based upon? What you got your lap right there this morning. Hallelujah for the Word of God. Hallelujah for the Son of God. Hallelujah for the people of God. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being with us online this morning. God bless you. Hope you have a tremendous week. Hope things go well for you this week. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, it's easy done. Just ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to come into your heart. Ask Him, allow Him a place in your life. You'll never be sorry of it. He'll do things for you that you never would have thought possible. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this week. Church, thank you for coming.